If you've wondered about empowered, wealthy women, the first thing that will probably come into mind is some famous celebrity in Hollywood. And yes, most actresses can be quite rich, but if it's a matter of asking about the wealthiest women in the world, you'll have to dig much deeper to find out who they are. But don't worry, since I've conveniently come up with a list for you to learn about. First up is Abigail Johnson. One of the fiercest people on the intellectual battlefield are women who can lead. Who exactly is Abigail Johnson, the current CEO of Fidelity Investments? She stepped up for the position last 2014 and has been taking care of the firm her grandfather, Edward Johnson, created in 1946. Ever since then, the succeeding generations have been taking care of the business, making sure it stays on top of the industry. Abigail had fond memories of her childhood. The budding child studied at one of the most renowned private schools. Eventually, with hard work and perseverance, she graduated with a Bachelor's of Arts degree in art history. A few years down the line, she also finished an MBA at Harvard Business School. With all that said, let's talk about her estate. And oh boy, with that huge piece of land, we'll probably get lost in the Milton, Massachusetts mansion. Currently, Abigail handles 45,000 employees internationally. The strong woman prefers to have the limelight away from her and is extremely focused on creating impactful decisions for her company. This unrivaled focus led some lost clients in the past back home to her firm. She's made incredible contributions and for that, Forbes recognized her as one of the most powerful women in the world. Abigail is not only a woman of strength, but also a woman of love. Alongside work, she spends most of her time with her family. She's married to Christopher J. McCown, who owns a healthcare information company. And let's not forget her two wonderful daughters who she loves so much. Nada girl, you're doing great. Next up at number 9 is Iris Fontbana. This beauty who defies time now lives as an 80-year-old billionaire. She's recognized as the wealthiest person in her home country of Chile and the third wealthiest person in the whole of Latin America. Iris is especially recognized as a mining magnet, a millionaire businesswoman, and many others. But you might ask, how did she become so wealthy? A large contributor to her fortune was the wealth she inherited from her husband who sadly passed away in 2005. Andrew Nico Luxic Abarau, her husband, did not win against cancer and passed away, leaving behind businesses for his children and wife to take care of. The bulk of the mining companies was then managed by his sons. The already rich family, although suffering the loss of the man of the house, pushed through and continued to diversify their wealth. They delved deep into other industries, including telecommunications and food. As a result, Iris managed to build three mansions in her country which served as their main residences. In addition to this, she also has other huge properties in neighboring places and also runs a resort in Croatia. Like Abigail, Iris Fontbana prefers to be away from the public's prying eyes and often declines any interviews or press invites. Coming next at number 8 is Miriam Adelson. Luck does make you rich and when it finds the right person, you become extra wealthy. Miriam is that woman. She built her wealth through running casinos and leveraging human satisfaction. But before all this wealth, Miriam took and studied medicine in her home country, Israel. In the same country is where she met her first husband, Ariel Oakshorn. Both were in the medical field and due to some reason fell out of love with each other and decided on a divorce. Some time has passed and destiny happened, Miriam met Sheldon Adelson on a blind date back in 1991. Not knowing that Adelson was one of the wealthiest in the city, Miriam worked on with her natural charm and soon fell in love with each other. The two of them soon got married. Apart from being casino owners, the couple were avid supporters of Trump's campaign. They were also reported to have donated tons of money to help fund Trump's presidential campaigns. But in 2021, a Sheldon passed away, and naturally Miriam came through and all of Sheldon's casino businesses and wealth became her assets. In addition to all these, Miriam is currently the publisher of the newspaper Israel Hayom. On to number 7, we have Suzanne Clatton. Known as a renowned economist and German billionaire, Suzanne led Atlanta AG's grand transition into a world-class pharmaceutical company. To know more about this wonderful woman, let's go ahead and retrace her past. During her college years, she took up finance and marketing and went to a business school afterward to get an MBA. Not long after, her father passed away, leaving behind much of his wealth for her to take care of. 
At a fairly young age, she inherited 50 stakes in Atlanta AG and 12.5 stake in BMW. Similar to other billionaires, Suzanne diversified her business potential and participated in lucrative pursuits. As she progressed with her career in 1990, she met her late ex-husband, John Clatton. They eventually had three children as a result of their union. However, a nasty controversy sprang up in 2007. Allegedly, Suzanne was having an affair with a Swiss con man. The recognized playboy blackmailed Suzanne into releasing their photos if she failed to pay him a huge sum of 49 million euros. But the man later regrets this decision because he gets thrown in prison. In 2018, Suzanne's married life fell apart and ended up splitting with her husband. The reasons aren't disclosed publicly, but most would infer that the affair of the past has something to do with the separation. On number 6 is Gina Reinhardt. This woman is an Australian mining magnate and is currently the executive chairwoman of Hancock Prospecting. She currently owns one of the largest private companies in Australia and has various investments in other industries. But before becoming one of the richest women in the world, Gina had to turn around the bankruptcy of her newly inherited company faced. With great work, she managed to pull through and managed to rebuild her father's company. Like most of us, Gina had her fair share of struggles in her life. She had a short-lived union with Greg McMilton and had her first two kids. Not long after their divorce, she later married Frank Reinhardt and had two more children. Unfortunately, inheritance matters and company positions caused huge rifts in her relationship with her first two children. As reported, she didn't even attend any of their weddings and seemed to enjoy the company of her younger daughters more. On to number 5 is Jacqueline Mars. If it ever crossed your mind to be curious about who owns your favorite Twix, M&Ms, and Milky Way, then Jacqueline Mars will walk through it. Her grandfather was the founder of the renowned Mars Candy Company and she later inherited its right of ownership. Additionally, Mars also owns some world-renowned pet food brands such as Pedigree, Royal Canine, and Whiskas. What we know of her is she's married multiple times and cares for three children. Mars and her family appreciate their life hidden from the public and would go to a great extent just to protect their privacy. Jacqueline has multiple residences across Washington and Virginia. Additionally, her estate located in New Jersey has been listed for approximately $2 million. Now that's a lot! However, Mars's life isn't all about the sweet things, because in 2013, she was reportedly too drowsy to drive properly and crashed into a minivan. The incident summarized two casualties and sustained some injuries. Quite some traffic even, isn't it? Moving forward with number 4, we have Mackenzie Scott. She's best known as an American novelist and philanthropist. In her early career, she was one of the very first few employees of Amazon. She also was recognized as one of the influential figures because of her early contributions to the business. And as most of you know, she was married to Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon himself. Together, they built a family of four children, including a lovely daughter who they adopted from China. Growing up, Mackenzie knew that writing was her life path, and as such, she studied for a degree in English at Princeton University. Further down the line, her debut novel, The Testing of Luther Albright, was well received by many and won the American Book Award last 2006. Mackenzie advocates for well-intentioned donations and has donated billions of dollars to this date. She utilizes her accumulated wealth for the better good and has been actively engaging in several charitable movements. Though one of the richest women in the world, Scott never came off as a selfish type because of how willing she is to help out those in need. Third on the list, we have Julia Kosh. This time, this rich beauty doesn't even look 60 years old at all. Alright, let's get to know her a little bit better. Even while studying at the University of Central Arkansas, fashion is what truly moved Julia to her core. This was not a surprise because her parents owned a clothing store as a business, and after graduating, she modeled and worked as a fashion designer. In 1991, out of pure circumstance, she went on a date with David Kosh. But things did not take off the first time around, but fate seemed to be stubborn so that the two tried again in 1993. She eventually quit her work and married David in 1996. After a long time, her husband passed away in August of 2019. David left behind a massive amount of wealth and their children inherited almost half of the company. As of now, she remains a philanthropist with abundant wealth backing her up for the rest of her life. Up next is Alice Walton. She's best known as an American heiress who owns approximately $11 billion in Walmart shares. Alice finished her bachelor's degree in economics and immediately started her career as an equity analyst. She also found an investment bank, Llama, company back in 1988. 
Unlike her siblings, who were focused on Walmart, Alice focused most of her time curating art and expressing her love for it. She was also the known founder of the Crystal Bridges Museum in Bentonville, Arkansas. This goes to show that Alice wasn't idly sitting around, but also an active woman with pride. And the wealthiest woman in the world is none other than Francois Betancourt Myers. Francois has taken advantage of the world's inherent desire for beauty and aesthetics, creating highly effective cosmetic products. Her grandfather, Eugene Schuler, first started L'Oreal. Francois then inherited most of her stake in L'Oreal from her mother, Liliane, who was a French businesswoman and had passed away at an old, wise age. In addition to L'Oreal, as a religious person, she wrote multiple biblical commentaries based on the Notre Dame Cathedral fire back in 2019. Out of compassion, she also donated $226 million to fund its repairs and restoration. Truly, she was a woman with a golden heart. That's all I have for you right now. Hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated for more. See you around.